Hey everyone! If you've ever wondered why some women struggle to get pregnant and what can be done about it, you're in the right place. Today I'm breaking down the real reasons behind female infertility and more importantly, the solutions. Let's keep it simple and straight to the point. So don't forget to share with friends, like and subscribe to the channel. Adhesion, scarring and Asherman syndrome. It can happen after DC or infectious or surgeries. They literally glue the uterine walls together, making implantation impossible. For treatment, they use tiny instruments to carefully cut and remove the scar tissue. After surgery, doctors may insert a small balloon and prescribe estrogen therapy to help the uterus heal better. Think of it as a cleaning and rebuilding the inside of your uterus to make it baby friendly again. 4. Uterine Septum it's a congenital condition, meaning you're born with it, and divided the uterus partly or fully, often linked to early miscarriages or failed implantation. For the treatment, a simple surgery with high success rate afterward. So yeah, if you're struggling to get pregnant and everything else looks normal, don't forget the uterus itself. Even small issues like polyps or fibroids can make a big difference. The good news is, most of these problems are very treatable, minimally invasive procedure. Many women go on to conceive naturally after treatment. Let's talk about one of the most underdiagnosed and misunderstood causes of infertility in women, endometriosis. A lot of people think endometriosis just mean painful periods, but actually it can silently affect infertility even if women don't have much pain. So what is endometriosis exactly? It's a condition where tissue similar to the lining of uterus, the endometrium, start growing outside the uterus. This tissue can show up on the ovaries, fallopian tubes, outer surface of the uterus, even on the bladder, bowel, and pelvic walls. And here's the issue. Each month, this tissue responds to hormones just like your uterine lining does. It's thickened, breaks down, and bleeds. But there's nowhere for the blood to go. That leads to inflammation, scar tissue, ovarian cyst called endometriomas, and unlimitedly a disrupted environment for eggs, sperm, and embryos. So, how does it affect fertility? It can block or damage fallopian tubes. It can cause inflammation in the pelvic area, which interferes with egg quality and sperm function. It can create scar tissue that makes it hard for the egg and sperm to meet, affect implantation in the uterus. And the tricky part? Even women with mild or invisible symptoms can have endometriosis that affect fertility. So how is it diagnosed? Ultrasound can sometimes show signs, especially if there are cysts, but it often misses mild or deep endometriosis. MRI may help in some cases. The golden standard is laparoscopy, a minimally invasive surgery where a camera is inserted through a tiny incisions in the abdomen. That's the only way to definitely diagnose and stage endometriosis. Treatment options for fertility. 1. Surgical removal Doctors can remove or burn away endometriosis lesions. It helps restore normal anatomy, freeing up the ovaries, tubes, and uterus from sticky adhesions. It may also improve ovarian function if cysts are removed. Best for women under 35 with moderate to severe endometriosis who want to conceive naturally. 2. Going straight to IVF. In some cases, especially if you're over 35 or the endometriosis is severe, doctors may skip surgery and recommend IVF directly. IVF helps bypass many of the issues caused by inflammation or tube damage. Best for women with long-standing infertility, low ovarian reserve or failed previous treatments. 3. Combining surgery plus IVF. Sometimes doctors recommend a laparoscopy first to improve the pelvic environment and then IVF if pregnancy doesn't happen naturally within 6 to 12 months. 
Some medications can suppress endometriosis by putting the body in a temporary menopausal state. But they are mostly used to relieve pain, not to improve fertility, because they also stop ovulation while you are on them. So these are not first-line option if you are actively trying to get pregnant. Endometriosis is more than just a bad period, it can be a silent roadblock to pregnancy even in women who look completely healthy on the outside. But the good news, with early diagnosed expert treatment and the right fertility plan, many women with endometriosis do go on to have healthy pregnancies, both naturally and through IVF. Alright, let's talk about one factor we can control, age. And before anything else, let me say this. Getting older doesn't mean you can't get pregnant, but it does mean things might take longer and may need a little help. So what exactly happens as we age? When it comes to fertility, age mostly affects two things. 1. Egg quantity, it means how many eggs you have left. 2. Egg quality. In egg quantity, we're born with all the eggs we will ever have, around 1 to 2 million. By puberty, the number drops to about 300,000. By age 30, the decline becomes noticeable, and by 35, the decline speeds up. By 40, most women have only a few thousand eggs left, and many are not genetically normal. About egg quantity. Even if you still ovulate irregularly, the chance that the egg is chromosomally healthy goes down with age. This increases the risk of difficulty getting pregnant, chromosomal abnormalities like Down syndrome. Let's talk about numbers real quick. In your early 30s, your chance of getting pregnant per cycle is about 20 to 25%. At age 35, it drops to around 15%. At 40, it's about 5 to 10 percent, and by age 43 to 45, natural pregnancy becomes very rare, less than 1 percent. How do doctors assess age-related fertility? There are a few key tests. 1. AMH measures your ovarian reserve, how many eggs are likely left. 2. FSH if FSH is high, it may mean the ovaries aren't responding well. 3. AFC, done via ultrasound, shows how many small follicles are visible on the ovaries. These tests don't give the full picture, but they help doctors estimate your fertility potential. What are the options if age is affecting fertility? 1. Try naturally, but don't wait too long. If you're under 35 and have been trying for a year or over 35 and trying for 6 months, it's time to get evaluated. Early testing can save your time and stress to ovulation support or IUI. If everything looks good, expect egg quality. Doctors may try milk stimulation, especially for women under 38. 3. IVF This is often the most effective option for women over 35, especially if AMH is low or previous treatments failed. IVF allows doctors to retrieve multiple eggs, fertilize them, and select the healthiest embryo. They can also perform PGTA testing to check for chromosomal problems. This increases the chance of a healthy pregnancy, especially in older women. 4. Egg freezing If you're not ready yet. For women in their 20s or early 30s who wants to delay having a kid, Egg freezing is a great option. The younger the egg are when frozen, the higher the success rate later. It's like a pressing pause on your fertility timeline. 5. Egg donation If your own eggs are no longer valuable, especially after 42 to 43, donor eggs can be used with IVF. This has the highest success rate for older women, sometimes over 60 to 70% per cycle. And yes, you still carry the pregnancy, give birth and experience everything just like a natural pregnancy. Age is not the end, but it's a factor. And the best thing you can do is get informed early. Test your fertility, make a plan that fits your timeline and goals. Whether it's trying naturally, starting IVF, breathing eggs or considering donor option, 
there are solutions. You still have choices, but time gives you more of them. Infertility can feel frustrating and overwhelming, but with the right diagnosis and the right treatment, many women do go on to have healthy pregnancies. So if you or someone you know is going through this, you're not alone. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video with someone who might need it. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.